Greetings from Washington, D.C. This is Peter Thomas, the General Counsel of NAAOP, the National Association for the Advancement of Orthotics and Prosthetics, in our 25th year. Uh, I'm here today to talk about essential health benefits. This is one of the important provisions in the Affordable Care Act, generally regarded or known as health care reform, uh, that requires each state to mandate uh, in private insurance plans uh, that a, an essential set of benefits is available to every individual and small group in that state. So every state has to comply with this provision, assuming uh, the President is reelected and uh, the Affordable Care Act continues to be implemented as is. Um, assuming that occurs, um, states are provided uh, the discretion to choose what type of a benefit package they're going to offer to their individuals and small groups in their state to purchase through something called the new state-based exchanges. These are marketplaces, web-based or bricks and mortar marketplaces where individuals can purchase private insurance. The essential health benefits package is a critical element of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, it requires coverage of rehabilitative and habilitative services and devices. That's just one of the ten benefits that is specifically listed in the statute. The states right now are going through the process of selecting a benchmark benefits plan, something that's already sold in the state, whether it's this, this largest small group plan in the state or the state employees health benefits program. Whatever the state selects, it then needs to, I guess I could say, plus up the benefit package to make sure that it covers the ten categories of benefits listed in the statute, and that the benefits are not designed in a way that discriminate against people with disabilities and chronic conditions. So that's what the states are doing right now. There was a kind of a soft deadline of the uh, end of September, which most states have complied with, but there are plenty of states out there that have not yet uh, selected their benchmark benefits package. And uh, states will not only be um, required to update those benefit packages in future years, but they'll also um, be asked to specifically define for health plans functioning in their state uh, exactly what benefits are covered. So the category of rehab services and devices is a broad category. And the big question is, you know, will states select and elect to cover orthotics and prosthetics in the context of that uh, benefit category. We are pushing hard to try to get that to happen. Uh, we, there's legislative history. There are uh, good indications from documents that have come from the Department of Health and Human Services thus far that orthotics and prosthetics should be included in those, those state benefit packages. But the state needs to make an affirmative decision to do so. And so we banded together with a, a number of other groups, 54 national organizations, recently signed on to this document. And this document can be uh, found at www.naaop.org. And we encourage you to go onto our website and to click on the, uh, the uh, uh, button that essentially brings you to this document. Download the document and do what you can in your state to use it to your advantage and to your patient, patient's advantage. Introduce your state legislators, send it to your governor, uh, send it to your insurance commissioner, uh, send it to your uh, health benefits commission if your state has one, and try to make sure that they understand that orthotics and prosthetics needs to be included in the essential health benefits package in your state. It's an important document that goes deeply into O&P coverage in addition to a lot of other types of rehabilitation services and devices. Uh, and it's critical that your state uh, policymakers understand what ONP is, what impact it can have on patients' lives, and uh, generally how cost effective it can be uh, in allowing s an individual with an amputation or with some other kind of musculoskeletal or neuromuscular condition to be functional, to live independently, to go back to work, uh, and to generally live a, a high quality life. So we encourage you to help us uh, help the field and help your patients by taking this document and uh, by widely distributing it in your state. Thanks so much, and we look forward to the next webcast.